All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu, and we'll understand Apex through our next use case, which is use case 20. Find the logged in users' details. The details should include the user's time zone, the locale, and the last login date. Right. So the use case simply prompts us or asks us that who is the logged in person? We want some information or details about that person. Right. Where is this useful? This is useful when you are actually working on context related data. Right. So whenever you are writing any code or whenever you need your code to execute based on the user's context, right, you need to understand who is the currently used uh, logged in user and what kind of permissions that that person holds or is he from a specific profile or does he have the specific permission set? Only then I want to do this particular action. That's when current logged in users info comes in picture. Right. So. We'll try to understand how to solve this use case by creating our next use case class, which is Apex use case 20, right? So we have made it through the 20 use cases. This is the 20th one. I hope you are writing code alongside me. You're not just looking at the videos. And for those of you who know how to get this done or how to solve this, you can pause the video here and give it an attempt on your side. All right. So I'll just go ahead and create a method and that would basically be called public static, sorry public static void get logged in user info yeah and I don't really need any kind of inputs here because I should be able to fetch information about the logged in user from some some class that provides me that information out of the box we don't need any input from the user right the class or the apex should be intelligent enough to identify who is executing this particular code or who's currently logged in as part of which this code is getting executed Okay. And what do I want to return? I want to return a list of things or probably a set of things. Like I need to return three things, right? What are those three things? I need to return the time zone, the locale and the last login date. Okay. So we'll look at how to return it to the method. But for now, let's understand how to solve this. So to get any kind of user information, like I said, any kind of user information, there is the user info class in Salesforce as simple as that. Right. So you have this class that's called user info class. This is also from the platform. OK, we have not created this class. This is coming from the platform, just like the system class, just like the schema class. You have the user info class. OK, and here you'll get all the user info methods as simple as that. Now, what is our ask? Our ask is to get the user time zone and the last login date. So see, get time zone is available. Get locale is available. All right, so we can pick up this methods and we can actually fetch information about this particular user. All right, so what will I do? I'll just go ahead and say get locale. How to use it? You can simply call this user info class, use a dot operator in between, and it has a static method that's called get locale. So I'll just go ahead and call it out. What does it return? It returns a string value, which will basically look like this English US or English um, uh, UK, whatever, right? That would be the result. So what do I need to do? I need to go back to my VS code and I'll simply say string locale info is equal to user info dot get locale and the methods are showing up here. That's a good thing about VS code, right? Similarly, I want the time zone. So I'll say time zone info is equal to user info dot get time zone. All right. Similarly, do I have the last login date information here? login related information no we do not have a method that gives us the third information what is the third information that we want we want the last login date so how do i get it so something that's not directly available i have to get it somehow indirectly correct now what is that ind indirect approach if i have the user info class can i get the id of the user basically the record id of the user yes there is a method that gives you the record id which is what get user id Okay, this basically returns the user's ID, which is the record ID. All right. So what I'll do is I'll basically get the user ID and then by using the record ID, I will query the last login date from the user object. Make sense. You see how I reached there. I got methods for these two things. So I simply directly use the methods, but for the last login date, which is a field on the user object. For those of you who have not seen it, this is a field on the user object. Do you want to see it? Let's quickly take a look. So I'll go here and I'll open the user object and we should see a last login date or a login date related field showing up here. Okay. I'll just say find 
last login date is it showing up it's here see this is a date time field and this is what i want to fetch basically right but the user info class did not have a method for it so what did i do i basically found another way out I have a method that gives me the record ID of the user record that's currently logged in and then I'll use that ID to find out my particular record using a SQL query and in that SQL query I will retrieve the last login date. Makes sense? Great. So let's try to write this out. So simply I'll go ahead here and I'll say string user ID is equal to user info dot get user ID. Alright, now what can I do? I can simply find my user record. I'll say user record is equal to select id comma last login date from user where id is equal to I need to put this colon because I'll be mapping a variable here and I'll just map the user id variable and ideally with this record id there should always be one record only correct. What will I do? I'll say if user record is not equal to null string last login info is equal to user record dot last login date makes sense perfect so instead of declaring this string last login info here because I need it outside the if condition I can simply declare it outside and I can just initialize it inside makes sense I'll just declare it here as an empty string and I'll here just say last login info is equal to user record dot last login date okay what additional check can I put I can put a check of if user record dot last login date is also not equal to null only then use it or else we might end up into a null pointer exception correct so I'll just put this code here all right what else can I do I can actually not use directly the user why because it might fail in this line itself so I'll convert it to a list and then I'll say instead of the null check I can check if user record dot size is greater than zero this is basically bulkification to ensure that we don't get a null pointer exception in this query because if this query does not return any record this will fail here if it just use the user object so always use a list or a collection and because we have converted this to a list now this will not be a direct variable it has to be indexed right the zeroth element should have the value because it is a list now it is not a direct reference of the object variable cool I'll just go ahead and say system dot debug and I need three debug statements right and I'll just print out my local info of the currently logged in person I'll print out the time zone info and I'll print out the last login info three things correct this is what we needed save deploy let's see if this gets deployed or not first of all there are some errors it says illegal assignment from system dot time zone to string so that means user info dot get time zone does not return a string return type that's a that's a problem similarly last login info is basically not a string variable because last login date was a date time field remember if you take a look at the developer console here the last login date is a date time so we have declared a we have done a mismatch of the data type so last login info will basically be a date time field okay and I cannot initialize it to an empty string because it is not a string now if I deploy I should only get one error which is the time zone info error let's take a look at it so if I see now only one error is showing up the second error is gone the error is that user info dot get time zone returns a system dot time zone type return type okay it is not a string so what can I can we do basically whenever we have such kind of scenarios right we can simply typecast or rather convert that value to a string so in string you get a method that's called value of string dot value of so anything you pass inside it will be converted to a string as simple as that okay so because we don't want to use that system dot time zone data type we convert it into a string and now it is getting assigned properly no errors code is deployed perfectly fine all right now is the time to take a look at the debug log and let's see how our method executes I'll not refresh we can directly execute it system apex use case dot 20 I don't even need the debug right now because I don't have a return statement right so I'll simply call the method get logged in user info 
So currently I am logged in, right? I am logged in as Himanshu, I believe. Let's take a look at what is his details or their details. I'll say execute. Code executed fine. Debug log is opening up. Debug only shows up and you see it says ENUS, Asia Colombo and this is the last login info which is basically today's login. I logged in at 728 today based on the Asia Colombo time zone. Locale. Alright. So I have got all the three information showing up for me on the debug log but the game now is that how do I return it to and return it basically as part of my method. What, what is one way of doing it? One way of doing it is creating a wrapper and that's what we are going to achieve. Okay. So to create a wrapper, I'll create an inner class. I'll call it public class user info wrapper and I'll create three variables in it. The first one being the last login info. The second one being the locale info. The third one being the time zone info correct I have three variables what can I do here I can simply this should be called locale it is showing local info I'll just change the variable name locale info now what can I do instead of storing it in string variables I can simply instantiate my user info wrapper correct and what can I do next is I can simply say wrapper dot locale info wrapper dot locale info is equal to user info dot get locale similarly wrapper dot last login info or rather the time zone info is equal to string dot value of user info dot get time zone and what about the third one the third one will basically be wrapper dot last login info Cool. So instead of having three debug statements, now I can actually just print the wrapper and that wrapper will have three attributes in it. Let's take a look. I'll simply say system.debug returned info and I can print my wrapper. As simple as that. Let's try to deploy it and see how it shows. Do I need the last login info date time variable? Even I don't need that because I have the wrapper working on it with the three variables. Let's redeploy it and now let's re-execute our last statement. I'll just wait for it to deploy. It is deployed. Let's say execute. Compiled fine. Debug log is opening up. Debug only. And you see the user info wrapper has all the three information in it with the variable names. And you can actually take it to your front end and you can use it by the dot operator and you can access each each variable inside the wrapper. All right. So what would be your return type? The return type would be a wrapper. What, what is the type of this wrapper? It is a user info wrapper that we created, a custom wrapper. So our return type can be user info wrapper. And what will we return here? We'll return this wrapper as simple as that. Save. And that's it. That's our use case there. All right. In case you don't want to return a wrapper and you want to basically serialize and deserialize your string, you, you, can, you can actually just use the JSON class. And you can parse or you can actually send your wrapper and what this will do is this will stringify your wrapper so your return type becomes a string okay take a look at the json dot serialize and deserialize method and then let me know how, how how you think about it i'll probably have a use case or probably some some tutorial around it as well no problem okay so these are two ways ways of returning your uh, response that you have collected from apex to front end like lwc aura or flow Okay, if you want to serialize your response, you can serialize it by using the JSON dot serialize method. And if you want to send it as is, you can simply send the wrapper as is the way we did it before, basically using the name of the wrapper. Even this is fine. No issues. All right. So that was all from this particular use case. What you can do is you can try to get the first name, last name, email address, uh, the profile ID and what kind of permissions that this user has right these kind of things you can try fetching from the uh, logged in users user info class and if you are not getting anything from the user info class try to query it out the way we did okay try to write that method you can comment below the entire method that you've written and you can tell me what you have coded and yeah that should be all that's use case 20 i'll see you in the next one bye